giving. You're all welcome today. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Jehovah the Most High God, I thank you. Ancient of day, I thank you. Thank you for your goodness, your mercy. Thank you for all that you have made possible for your sons and your daughter. Everlasting God, I thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, O oh God, that you should meet your children, meet them at the points of their needs, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Everlasting King of glory, you are the only way, you are the only answer to every man, every woman problem that believe in you. Lord, be a answer to their problem, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. You know their needs, you know their heart desire. You know all that they have been passing through in life. Lord, be a solution to their problem, O God, in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, whom the Lord has set free, it has set free indeed. Lord, set your sons and your daughter free from every house of the wicked, from every evil doer, from every sin, every iniquity, O God, in the name of Jesus. My viewers that are looking for the fruit of the womb, Lord, I ask, O oh God, whatever that is blocking their womb, whether it is from their marrow or from the error of their family, generation, Lord, I ask, O oh God, release the blood of Jesus Christ to cleanse them and to set them free. And open their womb, O oh God. Let their womb bear fruit from this moment, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. You are the only healer that will heal their womb, O oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, those that are oppressed by the enemy, by the forces of the darkness, Lord Jehovah the Most High God, you have sent your Son to deliver them. Let that wish you have sent your Son, O God, let it be accomplished in their life to deliver them from the power of the darkness, O God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit of the living God. Open their ear and their understanding to understand your word to do, O God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, today we are in part two of I know who I am. When you know who you are, you will not be looking for a native doctor. You will not be looking for witchcraft to find solution to your problem. When you know who you are, you are a solution to witches and wizard problem. You are a solution to familiar spirit problem. None of them being a solution to your problem. Praise the Lord. It's an error for every children of God passing through problem, looking for witches and wizards, looking for native doctor to be a solution to their problem. Uh, so did it in the Bible. When we are studying the word of God today, we will get to that place. Knowing who you are is very important to every man, every woman. Moses knew who he is. That is why he was able to lead the children of Israel out from the hands of Pharaoh. Well, uh, we are going to start from the book of Exodus chapter, chapter 3 today. Let's see from verse 17 <clears throat> to 22. Let's see what happened. And so that's chapter 3 from verse 14. And, <clears throat> and God said, un said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus says the Lord, Thus says unto the children of Israel, I am, has sent me unto you. Praise the Lord. When God sent you a message, <laughs> God must surely provide all that you needed for the message that he sending you. He will provide them for you. <clears throat> And when he's sending you a message, it's with you. He can never forsake you when you go to the message that he's sending you. 
And when he sends you a message, he must be with you and he must be ready to listen to every report that you are sending to him. Praise the Lord. And when God sends you a message, you do it according to the way God has sent you. It means you know who you are in God and who God is in you. And God sent Moses a message. He said, I am that I am. Tell the children of Israel that I am that I am have sent you to them. A message to them. As he sent him Moses, he was with Moses. And Moses knew who he is. First of all, let's move forward. Let's go to our cell. 14. And God said, Moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, has sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial unto all generations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. And God sent Moses a message to the children of Israel to tell them that I am that I am have sent him to them. Now the, the God of their father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob has sent him a, a message to them. Praise the Lord. And he has, he has, he has sent Moses a message and it's with Moses, praise Master Jesus. Let's go on. Go and gather the elders of Israel together and say unto them, The Lord God of your father, the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob, appear unto me, saying, I have sorely visited you, and see that which I do, I don't unto you in Egypt. Praise the Lord. And God has suddenly appeared. And he said, go and tell them that the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of their father, have appeared. When God appeared unto you, it means that God has stepped into your life. And when God stepped into your life, your life will be changed. What you are before, that is not what you are again. And none of powers have entered into you. Authority have entered into you. There you will not know who you are. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But many Christians don't know this. The <coughs> when God appeared to you, your life will be changed. Praise the Lord. There you will not know who you are. Amen. The topic of today, part two, I know who I am. Praise Master Jesus. We are going to verse 14 now. Verse 17. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt unto the land of the Canaan night, and the and he Tartite, and the Amorite, and the Perizzite, and the Hevite, and the Jebusite, unto a land flow with meek and honey. Praise Master Jesus. When God visits you, your life will be changed. I've said it before. When God visits you, he has stepped into your life, your life will be changed. No enemy will, that will have power over you. No witches and wizards that will be able to stand before you. The Bible says, if God is for us, who can, who can be against us? Who God is for us, meaning if God is with you, who can be against you? Many people today, they are crying of witches and wizards is because they don't know who they are. They don't know who they are in Christ. They don't know the power of God that is in them. They don't know the spirit of God that is in them. Praise the Lord. If a prince deny himself in any country he enter, they will use him as a slave until he prove who he is. That is where they will now respect him and give him honor of a king. Praise the Lord. 
And today, many of our brothers and sisters, they don't know who they are. Praise the Lord. Because they don't know who they are, they become a slave to their enemy. Enemy began to oppress them. Now, when you look at this place, now, when God appeared unto Moses, and God said, I'm going to take away the affliction of Egypt out of their life. Praise the Lord. They are no longer a slave again. Now they want to know who they are. Until God appear unto you, the affliction will not be taken away. And before the children of Israel, God visit them to take away the affliction. When you read chapter 2, the Bible said that, he said the children of Israel, their cry enter into the ear of God. Praise the Lord. When you read verse 24, chapter 2, he said, And God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, with Isaac, and Jacob. And God looked upon the children of Israel, and God have repented, repent unto them, respect unto them. Praise the Lord. Until you cry to know who you are, it is impossible for God to step into their life. So in chapter 2, from verse, where I just read last, chapter 2, from verse 24, it said, the, the cry of the children of Israel enter into the, into the ear of God. They are groaning. He enter into the ear of God. They now realize that eh, we are not a slave. We have been serving the king of Egypt as a slave. We don't know who we are. The king of Egypt has died. Now we are going to serve his son again. It is impossible for we to serve this home. We need to cry unto God to know who we are. We need to know God. So that God will prove himself to all. Praise the Lord. At the time they realize who they are, they cried unto God. How do you cry unto God in your affliction? The affliction you are passing through, how do you present it before God? How do you know, pray, pray to God to know who you are to God? It's very important, my viewer. Amen. Now, let's go to that chapter 3. And let's move on. Where do we stop? We stop in uh, and verse 17. And God said, I will take away the affliction and I will take you to a land that flow with milk and honey. Until you know who you are in Christ, to cry unto him and to tell him your problem, he will not step into your life. But these children of Israel cried unto him and he stepped into their life and he said, I will take away the affliction and I will take you to a land that flow with milk and honey. A land that flow with milk and honey is for Christians who believe in God, who know who they are in Christ, who know who Christ is in their life. Praise the Lord. So many Christians today, they are passing through affliction, they are crying unto God because they don't know who they are in Christ. Many are crying unto God, they are not crying with their inner heart. Many prayed unto God, they don't pray with their inner heart. God shed the heart of every man, every woman. Praise the Lord. You cannot deceive God. God knows his people. He knows people that are ready to serve him. And those people that are ready to serve God are people who know who they are in Christ. Until you know who you are in Christ, your affliction will not go. Praise the Lord. At the time you know who you are in Christ, the Spirit of God will enter you and it will begin to teach you some things that you don't know. When you know who you are, the Spirit of God will open your eye to show you many things that you have not known in life. Praise the Lord. When you know who you are in Christ, everything is possible to you. When you know who you are, you can do all things in life. Praise Master Jesus. He said, I will take you to a land that flows with pink and honey. When you know who you are in Christ, you will never lack of anything. And you will not lack of anything in life, your life will be sweeter than honey. 
So he said, I will take them to a land that flow with milk and honey. A land that flow with milk and honey, that is a land of success, a land of joy, a land of peace, a land of honor, a land of where you enter, you know who you are. Praise the Lord. Verse 18. And they shall hearken to thy, to thy voice, and thou shalt come, and thou shalt come. Thou and thy heirs of Israel unto the king of Egypt, and ye shall say unto him, Lord, the Lord God of Hebrew, the Hebrew, has met with us, and now let us go. Praise the Lord. We beseech thee three days journey into the wilderness, that we might sacrifice to the Lord our God. Praise the Lord. At the time that God appeared into their life for them to know who they are. And that is why they were able to bold and go to King Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, let us go. The God of Hebrew have, uh, have appeared to us. So when God appeared to you, you will know who you are. So at the time the God of Hebrew have appeared to Moses, and the and the heirs of Israel, they now they, they now have the boldness to go to Pharaoh and say, Pharaoh, let us go on that three days. If you don't know who you are, it is impossible for you to tell your enemy to let you go on that three days. Now you must know something there that God walk in three days. Praise the Lord. Jesus said, He said, destroy this house on that three days. I will build it back. But people don't understand because they don't know who they are. They were saying, how will Jesus said, let destroy this house, I will build it three days. Jesus Christ was talking about sin. You look at Job in the Bible, Job 42, you read verse 6, 7, 8. Job repented in verse 6, 7, every weapon was withdrawn. Verse 8, God restored the latter day of Job. That is three days. But when you know who you are in Christ and who you are in God, when you cry unto God in any problem, in any circumstances you are passing through, that circumstances don't supposed to pass three days. If you know who you are. Because many people don't know who they are. They cried unto God. They do fasting for seven days, 21 days, 40 days. For one particular thing, no solution. Why do you do fasting? Because you are far from God. You are doing that fasting to draw God closer to yourself. Because you don't know who you are. Now you want to know who you are. That is why you are fasting, for God to come closer to you. A child that far from his father will never pay the transport to go and see his father and his mother. But when you, your father and your mother is living with you, it is impossible for you to wake up inside your room, to walk to the next room to greet your father and your mother, you will pay transport. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's because people don't know who they are. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, in Moses and the elders of Israel, they went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, our God has appeared unto us. Meaning our God has entered into our life. He's with us now. He has appeared. Meaning he's with you. Now you know who you are. You can be able to both to speak to that which is a wizard holding you captive. And say, look, Mr. Man, you have been troubling me. Please leave me now under three days. If he refuses to leave you, he will see the anger of God because God is with you. Praise the Lord. My viewer, tell that your enemy. I give you three days to depart from your, my life. And if he refuses to depart, pray unto God that you serve. When you know who you are, you, when you call upon God and God will answer you, you will see what will happen to your enemy. In the book of Psalm 91, he said, A thousand will fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand side, and it will not come closer unto you. And you will see with your tunic head. I tell you, when you know who you are, you give your enemy three days to set you free, and he refuses. I tell you, you will see with your tunic head eye what he's going to pass through in life. Praise the Lord. Now, when God sent Moses and the children of Israel to visit Pharaoh and tell Pharaoh, let my people go on that three days. And Pharaoh said, no. God, send affliction into the land. 
God will send affliction into the life of your enemy that refused to set you free as you listened and cried unto God. They will never have rest in their life. In Jesus' name, amen. Verse 19, and I am sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, nor, nor by the mighty hand. Praise the Lord. Do you see it right now? He said, if the king of Egypt did not let you go, he will see the mighty hand of God. Praise the Lord. Because you have known who you are. God has appeared in your life. Your life has changed. You have forsaken God for long. You have separated from God. And that is what makes them to be suffering. Many Christians that have separated themselves from God have been passing through sorrows and tears because they don't know who they are. If they know who they are, they will speak to that demon that is afflicting them, that demon that has carried them into a body. The power is in you. God has given him power to you as he appeared unto Moses. God has appeared unto you and he has given you power. Jesus Christ sent his disciples in the book of Mark chapter 6 from verse 7. He gave his disciples power over sickness and disease over the demon. They know who they are. And they went out and began to preach the gospel of Christ with power, with authority, and with anointing. Many viewers, study the Bible, study the word of God to know who you are. So that you will continue to walk in the boldness of God and in the boldness of Christ. If you are, not, you are a Christian, you are not walking in the boldness of Christ, it means that you don't know who you are. A king's son can never walk like he can never walk like a snake. A snake. He walk in boldness. King Son, they walk in boldness. Anywhere they are, they walk in boldness. They speak in boldness. Learn how to walk in boldness. Learn how to speak in boldness with the word of God. You need to study the word of God and to know how to speak in boldness to any situation that you pass through. And when you are speaking to any situation you are passing through, none, let the word of God go with it. Because there is a word of God that is standing in any situation that comes across your way. In the book of Luke chapter 5, you see what Jesus Christ did to uh, Demon. When he was coming from uh, Judea, the Bible said the Spirit led him to the wilderness for 40 days and 49. The temptation he passed through, he was answering the devil with his scriptures. So in any situation that comes across your way, you need to know the scripture that we position in that place. And, and the scripture that we bring answers to that place. So if you don't know it, then it means you don't know who you are, and your enemy will begin to use you. But when you know the scriptures, that is, you need to present before that matters. Then you will know, then the power of God will appear. And people will now know who you are in God. And they will obey. Praise the Lord. Now let's move to 21. Uh, 20. And I will search out, search out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonder, which I will do in the mind thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Praise the Lord. When God appears, before God will appear in your life, it's when you have knew who you are. And when God appeared in your life, you will know who you are. That is where you can be able to speak to your enemy. You see where Moses and the elders of Egypt, they speak to Moses and Moses said, I will not let you go. And the hand of God rests upon the Egypt and he smit all the Egyptians. Praise the Lord. So if you don't know who you are for God to appear, your problem, will, there will be no solution. If Moses did not know who he, are, who he is to God, he will not be able to deliver the children of Israel, and God will not come down with his mighty hand. I tell you, my viewer, when you know who you are, and you began to walk in the way of God, oh, the mighty hand of God will come upon your enemy, and he will smite all your enemy as he smite the Egyptians. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Then when he smits them, he said, they will not what? Let you go. That is 20. 
Now, verse 21, and I will give these people favor. Oh, in the sight of the Egyptian. And it shall come to pass that when ye go, ye shall not go empty. When God set you free from the hands of your enemy, he will not just set you free without blessing you. He must bless you. Know who you are in Christ. In that situation you are passing through, it's for you to stand and to know who you are in Christ. When God set you free from the hands of your enemy, he will not just set you free and go. He will bless you. Praise the Lord. That is what God, that is the promise of God to every man, every woman that know who he is to do what he said. Had it been Moses refused to do the will of God? He said, no. Like some, as some Christians normally say, he said, ah, then they were, they are in Bini language, and we now just sabo. They don't know who they are. Who are you to walk in God's hand? Now you will now say, people walk in God's hand. It's not true. This is wrong doctrine. Let no man deceive you with this doctrine. That is why many Christians today, they don't know who they are. When they close for church, they are looking for witchcraft to be a solution to their problem. They are looking for native doctor. Native doctor is a witchcraft. If native doctor is not a witchcraft, he will not be able to do what he's doing. They don't know who they are. When they close for church, they go to native doctor. Christian going to native doctor for solution, he don't know who he is. What happened between Elisha and a king, when Elisha saw a servant of a king going with sacrifice to go and sacrifice to the gods of the land, and he said, servant, go and tell you, where are you going? He said, we want to go and sacrifice this offering to the gods of the land to save their king. And Elisha said, go and tell your servant, your king, he shall die tomorrow, he shall not live, because he don't know who he is. Because he don't respect God, he don't know God that created him. If you know God has created him, he's supposed to know who he is. God has making him a king. He don't know who he is. That is why he's now sending his messengers to go and serve idol for him. Instead of him to communicate with God. A king is very close to God. He don't know who he is. Praise the Lord. When a man refused to know who he is, he began to walk in error. That is the reason why many people today, they are walking in error. Many Christians are walking in error. Jesus Christ said in the book of Matthew chapter 23 verse 29, he said if you don't know the scripture and the power of God, you have error. If you know the scripture and you know the power of God, it means you know who you are. No evil man that will be able to stand before you. No witchcraft that will be able to stand before you. Praise the Lord. So let's move forward. Let's see what happened to Saul. In the Bible, in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 28, let's read from verse 5 to 15. Let's see what happened. Saul did not know who he is. He went and be looking for a witchcraft to be a solution to his problem. Praise the Lord. If you know who you are, you will not look for witchcraft. You will not look for a native doctor to be a solution to your problem. People doing it, they don't know who they are in Christ. They are adding more problems to their problem. Praise the Lord. My viewer, please make a change so that God will answer you. So that our God will fight for you. Praise the Lord. First Samuel chapter 28. Let's see from verse 5. Hallelujah. And when Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart greatly troubled. <laughs> Hallelujah. When Saul saw the, saw the Philistines, his enemy, he was afraid and he was troubled. Because he don't know who he is. Saul not supposed to be troubled when he saw his enemy. When he sees his enemy. So today, many Christians, when they see their enemy, they are troubled. 
When they see people that are troubling them, they are troubled. Their heart is troubled. Oh, I have seen this man again, this enemy. Even some of us, when we travel home, some Christian, when they travel home, he said, I don't want to see that man. No, no let that man know that I'm around you. Because you don't know who you are. And that is what's, what happened to Saul here. When Saul see, saw his enemy, Saul was troubled in his heart. He was afraid in his heart. Why are you afraid when you see your enemy? If you know who you are, you will not be afraid of your enemy. If you know who you are, you will even want your enemy to see you. Press the Lord. Because he that is in you is greater than he that is in him that is in the world. Because you don't know who you are, you are not greater than him. Both of you are even more the same. Even him that you are afraid is even more greater than you. That is why he was able to be troubling you. You are supposed to command him, not him commanding you. He's commanding you because you don't know who you are. Now, let's see what happened to Saul here. As he was greatly troubled, he was troubled in his heart. Praise the Lord. Saul has disappointed God. Not knowing who he is. So when you are a Christian and you don't know who you are in Christ, you are disappointing God. You are disappointing God. The power has been given to you over sickness and diseases to cast out the demon. These are your enemies. But when you see them, you are afraid of them. Instead of them to see you, they will be afraid of you. Know who you are. Praise the Lord. His heart was greatly troubled. Verse 6, and when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dream, nor by right, nor by prof prophets, prophecy, prophet. Praise the Lord. I tell you today, my brothers and my sisters, if you don't know who you are in Christ, immediately you see your enemy, you will be troubled. And when you are troubled, when you see your enemy, you have disappointed God. And that is what happened here. When Saul saw the Philistines, he was troubled in his heart. God was angry. The Bible said here in verse 6, he said, he inquired of the Lord. He asked God questions. God refused to answer him because he had disappointed God. So when you are a Christian, you are afraid of your enemy. You have disappointed God. God will also disappointed you. And that is what happened here. He said, he inquired of the Lord, and God, the Lord refused to answer him. He said, by dream, he refused. In communication, he refused. In prophecy, he refused. God refused to answer him. That is why many Christians today, they are passing through attack of enemy. They are praying, nothing is happening. They are asking God questions, nothing is happening. Even some of them, they cannot even dream again. And that is why he said, in dream, he refused to answer him. Meaning he cannot dream again. Praise the Lord. Knowing who you are in Christ. So when you are passing through all these things, you should know that you are falling out of the way of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said in prophecy, he refused to answer him. In prayer, he refused. Communication, he refused. Because he has disappointed God when he sees his enemy. So many of us today... Enemy is oppressing us because we have neglected the power of God in us. Because we have denied God when we see our enemy. Because we don't know who we are in God when we see our enemy. So when you see your enemy, be bold. Study your Bible so that you will be bold to them. Study your Bible so that you will know who you are in Christ. Praise the Lord. Let's move forward because of time. Verse, verse 7. I think we are going to verse 7 now. Verse 7. Then said Saul unto his servant, Seek me a woman. Oh, that has a familiar spirit. That I may go to her. And inquire of her. And his servant said unto him, Behold, there is a woman. That has a familiar spirit in a dawn. Dawn. Praise the Lord. Now, how can a king 
sending his servant to look for a witchcraft, somebody who has a familiar spirit, a native doctor, to tell him how he's going to went about his enemy, the Philistines. Saul has denied himself. Saul has denied God. Saul never knew, Saul has fallen and he never knew who he is again. How can a Christian looking for a man or a woman that has a familiar spirit to tell him or her about his life? Praise the Lord. He Saul denied himself. Saul did not know who he is again. Praise the Lord. Instead of people coming to him to ask him about his, their life. Now Saul is not going to people, even a prophet. He's not going to a man or a woman that has a familiar spirit. Mami, what a spirit? Witchcraft spirit. Praise the Lord. He know, he, he know not who he is. Now let's move forward. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment. And he went and went and two men with him and they came to the woman by night and he said i pray thee praise the lord and i also did not so has denied who he is even when they were going with he was going with two men so put another garment to disguise himself praise the lord Disguise himself, meaning deny himself before the woman again, before the witchcraft. He denied who he is before God. Now he's denying who he is again before witchcraft. Praise the Lord. So many of you have disguised. Go to that woman, not let him know that I'm the one that sent you to him, to her. Go to that man, that native doctor, don't let him know that I'm the one that sent you to him. Praise the Lord. You deny, as a Christian, you deny who you are before God, and you are denying who you are before that witchcraft again. So when you look at what happened to Saul here, and it has been happening in the life of people who deny God and who deny who they are. Praise Master Jesus. Amen. So this is happening to it happened to people because they don't know who they are in Christ. Hallelujah. Divine unto him unto me by the familiar spirit and bring me bring me him up who I shall name unto thee. Verse 9. And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knewest what saw has done. Praise the Lord. And the man, woman that has a familiar spirit, he was talking to the servant of uh, Saul. He said, you have come now to inquire of me concerning Saul. He said, you have known what Saul did. And before, and this thing is still happening in the life of Christians. You go to church, you are in your house, you are praying every witch is and wizard troubling you. Every witch is and wizard in your father's house died. Died by fire, died by fire. Now when you have a problem, you are seeking for witchcraft. And that is what this woman said. He said, you know, you know what Saul has done to us in this land. And Saul was killing all the people that has a familiar spirit in the land. Now when he has a problem, he's not looking for familiar spirit. Did Saul know who he is? Saul did not know who he is. Praise the Lord. And that is what that woman is saying. He said, you know what Saul has done to us in this land. Praise Master Jesus. Hallelujah. How he has caught all those that has familiar spirits. Do you hear it? How he destroyed them. And the wizard. That's mommy water and witchcraft. How he destroyed them in the land. Out of the land whereof they layeth, layeth thou a snap for my life. I hope you did not come with the message of Saul to destroy my life. <laughs> the woman is talking. To cause me into death. Die. Praise the Lord. I hope you did not come with Saul's message to come and kill me. But the woman never knew that Saul did not know who he is again. 
At the time he knew who he is, he was destroying the familiar spirit, the wizard in the land. When he fell out of the way of God, Saul did not know who he is. Again. God forsake him and he began to look for witches and wizards to be a solution to his problem. Looking for them. So many Christians today that are still looking for witches and wizards, looking for mommy water, to be a solution to their problem. They, knew no, they don't know who they are again. I am telling you, in any situation you are passing through, Pray unto God to know who you are in Christ. Don't be like Saul. Praise the Lord. Now let's move forward, verse 10. And Saul swear to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment upon to thee for this time. Now Saul was swearing unto God and said, Woman, I will not punish you again this time. <laughs> now, if so, is not telling a familiar, a woman that has a familiar spirit that he's not going to punish them again in the land. Meaning he's not going to destroy them again. He's not going to pray, about, pray against them again. Praise the Lord. So you that is going to witchcraft to look for solution, you are going to a mommy water to look for a solution to your problem. How will God answer your problem? If you will not destroy them again, you will make a covenant with them. Praise the Lord. How are you going to fight that battle? So you that is still going to native doctor to look for solution, they ask you to bring something, you send it to them, or you give it to them. Then how will you go home or go to a church to pray for God to destroy your enemy? It means that you don't know who you are. And that is what Saul said. They said, I, Saul make a comment and that he's not going to destroy them again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now verse 11. Then said the woman, who shall I bring up to up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Saul, somewhere. Hallelujah. Now he's looking for somewhere the prophet. Amen. Let's see what happened. Hallelujah. Let's see what happened. Verse 12. And when and when the woman saw somewhere, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman speak to Saul, saying, Why hast thou delivered me? For thou art Saul. No. Oh. Now Saul, when he saw somewhere, he had to remove the cloth that he put on to disguise to the woman. And the woman says, Saul, why hast thou deceived me? You have come with the prophet. And you are here to destroy me. You deceive me. Praise the Lord. So when a Christian refused to know who he is in Christ, passing through affliction in the hands of his enemy, he will become a betrayer. He will become a betrayer. What he don't supposed to be doing, he will be doing it because he don't know who he is again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Please study your Bible and know who you are in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let's see verse 13. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what soeth thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God. As I saw God ascending out of the earth. Praise the Lord. And the woman is now giving a prophecy, a prophecy to someone that he has saw God ascending out of the earth. Meaning God is departing from Saul. I saw God departing out of the earth. God is departing. So I tell you brothers and sisters, my viewer, stop going to native doctor. Stop going to witches and wizards to inquire of the problem you are passing through. Today, know who you are and speak to God. As you are talking to your father and your mother in the house, the same way you talk to God. God is not far from you. But you make God to far from you. It is time for you to realize your error and tell God, God, I am sorry. From today, there will be a changes. Speak to God. 
Even Jesus Christ told us, he said, when you pray secretly, then I will answer you openly. You can pray within your heart. You can kneel down inside your house and tell God and say, God, I'm sorry. I have done a mistake. I have made a mistake. In inquiry from native doctor. Inquiry from family spirit. Inquiry from Windsor. Praise the Lord. Let me not be like Saul again. In Jesus' name. And God will answer you. Amen. Verse 14. And he said unto her, What from is of off? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And saw, and saw perceived that it was Samuel. Amen. He perceived that Samuel is coming. He's talking about Samuel. And he stood with his face to the ground and bowed himself. Verse 15. And Samuel said to Saul, Why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And so answer, I am sure, I am so dis, distressed, I am so distressed for the Pharisees, for the, for the Philistines made war against me, and God has disap, departed from me, and answer me not, no more. Neither by prophet nor by dream. Therefore I have called thee that thou mayest make new unto me what I shall do. Praise the Lord. So when you look at it now, Saul, Saul went to the woman, a familiar spirit to look for solution. Many of you have been going to a, a witches and wizard to look for solution. You have been going to native doctor to look for solution. No solution. That is what happened here. Saul went to a witchcraft. A woman that has a familiar spirit to look for solution. No solution. Now he now calls her. Praise the Lord. It has been happening to many Christians. They go to church, no solution. They go to native doctor, no solution. They will come back to Christian, the church again. And solution will be given unto them. Why? When they were going to church the first time, they don't know who they are in Christ. They go to native doctor, native doctor, the first happened then, no, no solution. Now when they come back to God, they get to know who they are. Solution will appear. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's see verse 29. Many of you, my viewers, listen very carefully. Study your Bible. I've said before, when I'm in the studio, carry your Bible. And you study your Bible with me. So that you will know where you are falling and where you are not to fall. Praise the Lord. Knowing who I am. Let's see verse 19 before we move forward. Moreover, the Lord will also dis deliver Israel with thee unto the hand of the Philistines. And, and to, tomorrow shall thou and thy son be with me. The Lord also shall deliver the host of Israel into the hand of the Philistines. Praise the Lord. Because he has went to a native doctor. Because he has went to a woman that has a familiar spirit. No solution to his problem. So many people began to suffer today because they don't know who they are in Christ looking for a witchcraft, a familiar spirit, a, a man or a woman that has a, witch, a wizard spirit to tell them something about their life. Instead of seeking for God. Praise the Lord. You know where we have read before? He said, even dream, he cannot dream again. Many Christians can't dream again. Even when some of them dream, they don't know they will not remember their dream again. Because they don't know who he is. Saul refused to know who he is. No dream. No prophecy. No word. Praise the Lord. Know who you are from today. In Jesus name. May God give you the spiritual understanding. To understand and to know who you are. 
in Christ. Praise Master Jesus. Let's quickly open to the next, the last chapter in the Bible. Let's go to the book of 1 John chapter 2, verse 25 to 28. We stop there today, knowing whom I am in Christ. You need to know who you are in Christ. If you don't know who you are in Christ, you went about to be looking for native doctor, looking for witchcraft, looking for wizard, to be a solution to your problem. God will depart from you. And God will forsake you. When you are praying, it will not answer you. When you are seeking for miracle, no miracle. When you are seeking for solution, no solution. When you are seeking for, for power, no power will be given. Praise the Lord. When you dream, you may not know. Remember your dream again. Praise Master Jesus. Let's see the book of 1 John. 1 John. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. First John chapter 2. If you are there, let's move forward. From verse 25, that is where we are going to stop. From verse 25 to 28. Praise the Lord. Verse 25 there. And this is the promise that he has promised us, even eternal life. When you know who you are in Christ, that there is anointing that God has given to you. When God appeared in your life, anointing that can make all things possible have come. Anointing that will make impossible to possible have visited you. And that is the promise of God, eternal life. When you have that anointing, you have an, an eternal life. In eternal life, there is no sorrow, there is no sickness, there is no attack of enemy. And that anointing comes when you know who you are. Moses knows who he is, and God gave him that anointing. Praise the Lord. As he appeared in his life, he gave him that anointing, and he began to walk in that anointing. And he know who he is. Many of us have the same anointing, but because we don't know who we are, that anointing is going down. Build it up, it's in you. You don't need pastor to help you to build it up. You don't need to fast 30 days or 40 days or 100 days to build the anointing. Carry your Bible, study your Bible daily. Then you build the anointing. Praise the Lord. When you look at Joshua, Joshua chapter 1, Joshua was meditating in the word of God day and night. The Bible did not talk about fasting there. And God said, no man will stand before you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Study your Bible. Meditate in the word of God day and night. When you are meditating in the word of God day and night, you know who you are. In anything you want to do, you will watch out before you do it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 26. Those things have I written unto, the, unto you, concerning them that seduce you. But the anointing which ye have received of him abide in you. Do you see the read? He said, the anointing that you have received from God abide in you, meaning the anointing is in you. Don't quench the anointing. When you know the anointing that you have received from God, you know who you are. You walk with boldness in the, in, in, in the sight of every man or every woman. Don't let the boldness of Christ go down in your life. The anointing that God has given to you, let build it up. Increase the anointing by studying the word. Increase the anointing by, by walking in boldness in the word of God. Praise the Lord. Let's move forward. Verse 26, those things have I written unto you concerning them that seduce you. Let people not seduce you. By then what? Saying, 
you work in God's hand. When you close for a church, that doesn't mean you should not go to a native doctor. That person is your enemy. As a Christian, you are my viewer. If anybody is advising you to send him money or to give him money or to follow him to a native doctor to look for familiar spirit, I tell you, that person is your enemy. Run away from him. He wants you to experience more problems and saw experience in life. Praise the Lord. Now let's go to verse. Let's see, continue from verse 26. He said, But the anointing which ye have received of him abide in you. And ye need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you. Praise the Lord. When the anointing of God is inside you, you don't need a teacher to teach you. You don't need a pastor to teach you anything. Whatever you want to do, the anointing is inside you to do it. The anointing that you have will teach you how to do that thing. Praise the Lord. The anointing that is inside you will lead you, will teach you how to come out in that problem you are passing through. Why do you look for native doctor? Why do you look for witchcraft? If you don't know who you are, you began to look for them. When you know who you are, there is anointing in me. The anointing in me can do all things. Praise the Lord. He said, when the, when the anointing that is inside you, he said, not to teach you all things. He didn't say some things. All things. Anything you want to do, the anointing is there to teach you. You don't need any teacher. When you know who you are. Praise the Lord. Enemy troubling you, how you are going to pray against that enemy, the anointing in you will teach you. If you want it to repent, the anointing is in you to teach, to teach you how you will pray for him to be repent. If you want him to go into a sickness, the anointing is inside you to teach you how to pray against him. Praise the Lord. Whatever you want into experience in life as he refused to repent, the anointing is inside you to teach you. Praise the Lord. The anointing was in Jesus Christ. That is why demon says, Jesus, I know that you are a son of God. Turn this stone to bread. He has the anointing. He said, thou shalt not live by bread alone. He defeated the devil. He took Jesus Christ up. He, he showed him the kingdom of the earth. He was so beautiful. He said, bow down to me, I will give you this kingdom of the earth. The anointing is in Christ. He said, thou shalt not serve other God. Bow down to other God except me. That is the anointing. Anointing to overcome any situation that you are passing through. Anointing to give answer to any situation that comes across your way. Study your Bible. The anointing is in you. Build it with the Bible. Study your Bible. A witchcraft come to your way. If you see a bed inside your room, if you know who you are, you will not run. If you know who you are, you say, hey, you witchcraft, remain where you are until I finish with you in Jesus' name. How need to remain? I said it last week. I said, even some Christians, because they don't know who they are, when they see angels of God, they will run. They will run. If they know who they are, when they see the angels of God, they say, you are welcome, my Lord. What do you come for? But before you go, this is my problem. You need to solve my problem before you go. Because they know who they are. But if you don't know who you are, you will run away. And the angels of God will be laughing at you. Many people, angels of God has visited them. God has visited them. They run away. Praise Master Jesus. So the Bible is saying here, in verse 27 of First John chapter 2, verse 27, it said, the anointing that is in you is enough to teach you all things. You don't need teacher. You don't need somebody that will teach you Bible. You don't need somebody that will help you out of the problem. How to come out of the problem, the anointing is inside you. How to overcome your enemy, the anointing is inside you. Whatever the enemy is doing to you, you want to put them into shape, the anointing is inside you. You want to overcome them, the anointing is inside you. You don't need somebody that will help you. Praise the Lord. Study your Bible. Hallelujah. My viewers, look at the screen. The number is there. I have said it before. 
If you have any question, call my number. If you want to contribute to the sponsoring of the studio, you can still call the same number on the screen. Praise the Lord. That is my personal number. Anytime you can call me. I've said it before. If you want to call me, call me from, from morning to 11 o'clock. From 11, I'm busy. But at a moment, I'm not busy now. I'm free now. You can call me anytime from 9 o'clock to 7 o'clock in the evening. I will answer you. Praise the Lord. Now let's go back. Let's go to 20, 28, verse 28. Anointing will teach you all things. Let's finish verse 27. And he is, he is truth. He is truth. And he and he and is known lie. It's no lie. And even as it has taught you, ye shall abide in him. Praise the Lord. So whatever the Holy Spirit teach you, the anointing teach you, you need to abide to it. When you do according to the teaching of the anointing that God has given unto you, you will say the answer. And when you obey, it means that you know who you are in Christ. When you obey, it means that you know who Christ in he, who Christ is in you. But if you don't obey, it means that you don't know who Christ is in you and you don't know who you are. I know who I am. When the Holy Spirit teaches me something, I obey. And when he's teaching me, I listen to him. And that is what makes me whom I am. Praise the Lord. Now verse 28, the last verse, before we close. And now, little children, abide in him, that we, that when he shall appear, we may have, we may have confidence, and not he ashamed before him at his coming. Praise the Lord. He said, little children, when he abide in his word, abide in his word. When you abide in the word of Christ and you call upon him when he appear, oh, your life will be a change. When the Holy Spirit teach you and you abide to the teaching and when God appear, your life will be changed. That land that flow with me can only, God will take you there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So we are closing for today. Another day next week we will continue. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Jehovah the Most High God, I thank you. Lord, give your sons and your daughter, oh God, anointing to understand all things, oh God. Anointing that will make them to know who they are. Anointing that will make them known to be looking for a witchcraft, looking for a familiar spirit for a solution. Lord, give them anointing to recognize you that you are the only solution to their problem. There is no other way. Lord, I ask, O oh God, grant it into their heart, O oh God. Let it not depart from their heart, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I thank you, O oh God, for all my viewers that are watching me. Lord, let your will be done in their life. Lord, let your word, O oh God, let it not depart from their life, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, tonight, meet them at the points of their needs, O oh God. Visit them, O oh God, and let there be a changes in their life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Bye, my viewers. Call the number in the screen. If you have any support, you can call the number. If you have any question, also call the same number. That is my direct number. God bless you all. In Jesus' name, amen.